Welcome back. In this video I will continue showing my uh, DIY lathe and this time it's been digitalized also. I added two stepper motors, one for the Z and one for the, the X axis. Uh, I will also show some use of it how how it really is working i am i must say i'm quite happy with the results these three m steppers uh, can handle uh, the load so it looks quite promising the jack is driven by a 180 watt servo I didn't change anything regarding that. I think it works quite well. Uh, and it has the advantage of uh, the, giving me the possibility to run it both as a lathe spindle or as a rotational axis. So, which, which I will show later on when I show you the threading. Okay, let's start. Uh, the first operation will be facing and chamfering this end of, uh, of a 10 millimeter aluminum rod, which I intend uh, to use as a, a test adapter for a small chuck. I will show you once it's done how I doing. I am quite uh, careful during these first cuts because I don't want to stall the, the servo and so it, it seems like it's cutting very nice. So next time maybe I will be a bit harder. The chips are not really breaking, they are quite long strings. Uh, I don't know how to do that uh, better. Probably if I could increase the rotation speed it would be better, but I can't. This is already maximum rotation speed of, of the jack, which is uh, 1000 RPM. The servo actually rotates at 3000, but there is a 1 to 3 gear also. Anyway, this first operation went quite well. It looks uh, very nice and shiny. So, I will continue with the other side also. On this side I also need to take down some of the, the diameter because the, the adapter must have a threaded part which is uh, 3 8 of an inch and it's a 24 pitch thread, fine thread. Uh, this will be the second time I am actually threading with my lathe tone because uh, well uh, the first time I threaded a 10 millimeter rod just to see if I can do it and it actually works very well. I'm using UCCNC uh, and uh, it's, uh, it is pretty simple to, to thread, you just have to calculate the number of tones. And that's basically it. You just enter the degrees, the number of tones uh, correspond to, and just uh, thread. So it's very simple. As you see, I am very, very careful. As you see, I am very, very careful 
which is probably not necessary, but uh, this is the first time I really use this uh, late. So I'm still learning. I'm also not a machinist by trade, so it's better to be careful than sorry. Strings are pretty long, but uh, it's okay. I, I do have protection and my camera is actually quite far from, from the machine, so there is uh, basically no risk of any damage or injury. And the resulting surface seems very nice. It's very shiny, nice and shiny, as it's supposed to be. So now let's start the threading operation. It is, as I said, quite simple, just uh, turning the chuck, the number of turns necessary and uh, just cut the thread how well it will work um well i'm quite confident it will work well because uh, uh, i tested it once with a 10 millimeter thread and this is no different than anything else it's just the number of tones and then cut uh, the only critical thing is the depth of cut because it's not very clear for me it's a lot of uh, it's mostly a trial and trial and error i don't know how deep i need to cut so i'm just guessing and uh, based on the experience i have from the 10 millimeter cut it's uh, it's pretty simple but also one advantage of doing it this way is that even if I have to cut a little bit deeper, uh, it's very easy to repeat as long as I am not resetting the machine. So removed from the chuck and brush clean. It seems uh, very good. And hopefully it will fit also. Measuring the thread, it, uh, it seems uh, exactly right, which is, of course, just as expected. And it fits on this mini chuck quite well also. It's a bit tight, but uh, I think uh, for, for the purpose it's better than if it was loose. After successfully making an aluminium adapter for my mini chuck, I decided immediately to make one out of steel also to see how that works, since uh, the actual adapter is intended to be made out of steel. And as you can see, it cuts uh, quite well, but as you also can see, I'm very, very careful even more careful than before. So the RPM is now only 500 and I'm making 
much shallower cuts also which uh, seems not to be necessary at all I think I can increase next time I increase the RPM to 1000 and make a little bit deeper cuts to see how that works out but for now this is uh, is okay and as I said before I don't want to stall the motor because if the servo is stalling then uh, the steppers for the moment just continue to push on because I still have to implement uh, emergency stops and uh, in case uh, motor stalls of course there should be an error and that should stop the whole machine but for now it is not doing that <clears throat> so again it's better to be safe than sorry but the chip breaking seems to be much better than in aluminium even if you can't really call that chips it's it's more like iron dust or whatever so that's it and because it's steel it's a bit magnetic so uh, some bits uh, just got stuck to to the iron and uh, Let's just wipe it off and have a look. And it looks uh, quite okay to be the first work. No sharp edges and it seems to be good enough to continue. And now it's time to make the other side. Yeah. I already chamfered and faced this side, so I, here I am just showing the cutting to the diameter. Basically it's the same as, as before with the aluminium rod, except that the chips are breaking much better. It's the same cutter and uh, I spoke to a friend and showed him and he said that the cutter is uh, made for steel, not made for aluminium. That's why I have the long strings uh, when cutting aluminium and it's breaking the chips when cutting steel. He knows a bit more about uh, machining than I do. So now the last moment is the threading. And because I use some lubrication plus that, as I said, it's steel, so it's magnetic. Some of the chips get stuck on the road, uh, which uh, needs to be cleaned now and then. And I use a small brush for that, but uh, if I was not making widow at the same time, I would have done a better job in cleaning the threads while threading. I think that's necessary to avoid uh, cutting into the, the already cut chips and damaging the thread so I think uh, constant cleaning is better than just uh, now and then like I do it now well, I am actually quite surprised that it cuts uh, steel 
as well as it does. And even though I am very, very careful, maybe too careful, uh, but it still works very well. And I'm actually quite happy that it works this well, because uh, one of my intention is uh, to be able to cut threads uh, of more unusual dimensions. Uh, so I don't have to, to buy or, or try to find uh, thread cutting dies. At the end of the thread cutting process, uh, the strings get quite long here also, but still uh, it breaks uh, more often than it does when cutting aluminium. Maybe the thread cutting oil is not the most optimal lubrication for this, but uh, that's what I had at hand. And I thought it's a good idea, but maybe it's not necessary. So next time I will try without anything. So this was the last uh, cut and after brushing off uh, it looks quite good. Not perfect maybe but uh, if it works it works. And considering this is the first, first time I ever cut in steel I am very very satisfied with the results. And it actually fits perfectly. I didn't uh, I had to to do anything to correct the threads. It was perfect the first time. Which is quite uh, unbelievable. But it's the truth. My main intention with this uh, chuck adapter was to be able to use this mini chuck uh, on my lathe also. The mini chuck came with a hexagon adapter, so it was not possible to use it in a lathe. But now I can do it easily. So that's it for now. Thank you very much and welcome back next time. Thank you and goodbye. And please don't forget to subscribe to my videos.